Hey everybody, we are back. Um, very excited to be here with Demis Rusley. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. That was a pretty quick little changeover that we very, just did. Very quick. <laughs> um, just yeah. turned on my laptop. Behance does not muck around. Uh, um, yeah, we may have been cut off, so anyone that was just in that last stream, sorry about that. Um, I kept talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think you guys heard us. Um, hey chat, uh, thank you for sticking around and hi to everybody that might be new. Um, here we are on Adobe Live, uh, live in Sydney. Love to find out um, where, uh, where you guys are at as well. Might be some new people in there. Um, but yeah, it's very exciting. We're continuing our love for Photoshop um, by doing two like, live streams in February. Yeah. Um, so you know Photoshop's 30. Oh yeah, 30 years old. 30 years yeah, old. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. So there we a couple go. of weeks ago, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so it's like a birthday show. month. Should we right. sing now? <laughs> yeah, we're just going to sing happy birthday <laughs> just for an hour on stream. <laughs> Strap yourselves in, everybody. No, we, I, we, we won't make you do that. Hello, JB. Hi, Rosie. Festus. Good to see you still in there. It's great. Um, but yeah, so this is actually, I mean, we've done a bunch of Adobe Lives together yep. um, in Sydney, but we've never been lucky enough to be on Behance. So now that yeah. we're on Behance, maybe we, maybe it might be time for a new introduction, uh, who you are, what you do. I've changed now. Uh, you changed. <laughs> you're, you're older, more mature. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, hello everyone. My name is Demis Rizali. I am a designer uh, working in architecture and also a photographer based in Sydney, Australia. Um, yeah, I do a lot of Photoshop work, um, a lot of sort of like m my photography is sort of a little bit different because I try to change things up and I add a little bit of effects here and there, I flip mm. buildings, flip cities upside yeah, down. Yeah, you do some pretty crazy stuff. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, I learnt Photoshop through uni when I was back in uh, doing architecture mm. in architecture school and uh, we were kind of forced to use Photoshop. Uh, like. There was no course for it. We just had to use it to to get our projects up to par to like yeah. everyone else's projects. It's interesting, like that you use Photoshop in architecture, mm. like because you would have been using like. So we also it's like a combination of like CAD mm. and Photoshop. So right. like you you get like line work and you get clean lines from mm. from CAD and then you bring it into Photoshop and you texturize everything. Right. And that's how I kind of learned about like lighting, about shadows. Mm. And that's how I br bring it to photography as well. Cool. Um, and so I guess the mix of architecture and the mix of photography has played a role in what I do today and my work on Instagram and hmm. everywhere else. Awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, hey, Nathan from Seattle. Oh, yeah, you got some behind the scenes audio, did you? Great. That's cool. We know what we're doing. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think there was some behind the scenes oh. audio while we're getting everything set up, oh, so, oh. but it's, it's all good. <laughs> so when Ben was on, Ben was actually talking about, I don't know if you got to hear it um, back there in our setup, little green room that we got going on, um, but he was saying that um, some of the small subtle changes, he won't, he won't quite bother, you, he's not going to spend like an entire week editing an image that might just be for Instagram, because mm, mm -hmm. no one's going to pick up certain things, exactly. so it's all about kind of time management, and he said, except for maybe Demis, <laughs> Demis might be the only one that, that picks it up. <laughs> is that something you do go through and just like, oh hey, hey, this is a little bit, a little bit. Uh, I, I go, like, I love to look into the details, because I feel like if you put in effort into the details, I don't know, you'll, you'll, you'll feel better, I feel better, right, and like, I know that I've done like my best. Like, okay. I don't want to like, yeah. But I don't know. It's just me. Yeah. <laughs> it's just That's cool. Who I am. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad we got you both on. We got two <laughs> ends of the spectrum here today. Um, but speaking of time, and so we don't get cut off while we're still going this time. <laughs> why don't we? Why don't we begin and kind of talk about, or we'll get stuck into mm. what we're going to do today. So um, I'll be. We'll be doing three this week, right? Yep. Um, the first session, which is today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to remove distractions and people from your photos because I mean we've all been to those places I guess Instagram spots or mm. like those locations where um, I don't know you, you go there you expect to just take a photo of like one friend or your wife or your girlfriend or someone and mm. then it's just that's it and the scene it's like the leaning Pisa situation yeah where it's just everybody <laughs> kind <Yeah>. of like, <laughs> like that. Yeah. but then it's never the case because everyone's gonna want that shot sure and yeah. so I guess um, using these techniques that I will teach you today, um, you can try to get rid of some of these people. Awesome. Um, and then tomorrow we'll be teaching the opposite, which is like adding people right. into photos. Yeah. So if it's like an empty scene or like the opposite to, mm. to add scale. Mm. And then in the last session, we're going to be talking about like social media mm. and a little bit how you grow and tips and tricks on social media. Yeah. So very full week 
and hopefully you guys learn something and yeah. yeah. There's a lot on for sure. And there's a great opportunity to ask questions as we're going as well. Mm, for sure. Um, so the, one of the reasons that we were chatting about this, we got to have lunch together, which was really nice mm. to talk about this. And we were talking about how we would sort of structure it out. And the first two kind of tutorials and then the last day is going to be a lot of like, like yeah, chatting about that social media stuff because it comes up all the time. Yeah, for sure. Because um, like you're, you know, prolific on, on Instagram. I mean, so, so is Ben as well. But you get those questions all the time. So we're going to spend actually quite a bit of time talking about talking about that stuff, which yeah. is really cool. So, but like, if you guys have any Photoshop related questions or that aren't related to this mm -hmm. or anything else, you can just ask away anytime, I guess. Yeah, ask away. Yeah. yeah, go for it. Um, so today we're gonna be working on um, this shot here, which I took in Hong Kong, which is a very famous basketball court. Mm. And that's why there are so many people there. Right. Like, there's photographers there, there's a kid riding a bike, there's a woman sleeping. Oh no, sorry, I don't know if she's sleeping, but she's taking a photo she's of her. There. But anyways. Oh, she's taking a photo of her friend sleeping? I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Okay. Um, there's like a guy sitting on the ledge there with, with his girlfriend taking a photo. But anyways, there's a lot of people in the background that we want to get rid of. Mm. Um, so this is sort of the, the end goal, right? So this is the end goal that we want to get to. Right. Um, so where it's super clean, it's just seats and nothing. So that's before, I mean, that's before, yeah and that's after. And that's the end goal we're trying to get to today. Awesome, very good. And just a shout out, we've got people from Brisbane and the Blue Mountains in Sydney. Oh. Amanda and Craig, good Hello to see you everyone. Then. Super cool. Um, so the first technique I wanna teach is called, um, it's either like content aware fill, mm -hmm. or you can use um, the spot healing brush. So just to begin with, we're just gonna start with this photo. Content aware fill is really good when you're trying to get rid of, it. it's when, Basically, Photoshop will just automatically get rid of the people for you. Mm. Um, and so when it's a predictable background or it's something very small, you can do this very, very quickly. So for example, let's just try with these people sitting down, right? So you're just gonna drag a box over it, drag a marquee, mm -hmm. right click it, and then there's fill. And there's all these different options of what you wanna fill that box with. Mm. And we're gonna go with content aware because it's like Photoshop, trying to be aware of all the contents around it and see how we go. So click it and that's actually not bad, right? Mm. So it's gotten rid of them. There's a bit of the poll that's been copied, um, but we can fix that using yeah. the second method. Or you can just keep going actually. You can just do it again. And sort of a little better, but you kind of want that line, right? Mm. Back back here. But we can get to get back to that a bit later. It's a very good like shortcut to get pretty close to the end. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so like these signs, for example, which are I find a little bit distracting, I can just get rid and it's mm -hmm. gone straight away. And this little dust mark because my camera's dirty, gone. So mm -hmm. that's one method, which is very, very quick, right? You can do that uh, with a lot of stuff here. So you can do it with all these signs that's on the walls. Um, you can do it with all these little specks on the ground if you really want to go that far. Mm. Um, but another tool that's exactly or very similar is called the Spot Healing Brush, which is here on the side. Uh, it's this guy here. It's got the Spot Healing Brush tool. So now you've got a brush. Um, you can change the size of it if you right click it. Um, and then you can change the hardness of it. So the lower the hardness, the more spread out and like filtered it is on the mm. side. So I usually go for very low hardness and all you have to do now is just like paint, paint over it. And it's basically the same thing. Cool. And it gets rid of the sign. So again, like this is very similar to Content Aware Fill and it's really easy to get rid of little specks. Um, and you'll usually do this fairly early on, like this is one of the first steps. Yeah, clean exactly. It up. Cleaning it up and like little specks like this, um, just to tidy up your photo um, with distractions, mm. or get rid of distractions. Um, then there's like sort of a little bit harder ones. Um, so we can keep going, right? Just keep going and so on and so forth. Then there's the next step, which is a little bit harder. We, we want to use the clone stamp tool. Mm. So clone stamping is this one right here. So what clone stamp does, or well, again, it's a big brush, so you can change the size. What clone stamp does is if you, if you um, basically, pick a spot. You you have to hold Alt. So you, let's say let's say I want to pick this. I one. get that error all the time. <laughs> you, let's say I want to pick this spot right here, right? Mm. Then you can clone it to another place in the photo. So let's say I want this part of 
the court to be yellow too, then you can just start painting. Mm. And you get, it's basically choosing that part that you've painted. Yeah. And it's done the same thing. It goes from there. Yeah. Something I forgot to do at the beginning was to make a new layer, but that's just as a precaution. Right. So I might just do that now, just in case. So I'm going to do You would usually do it as a bit of a as safety. A, yeah, as a mm. beginning. But because we've only gotten rid of a little, a little bit, it's okay. It's fine. Um, so it's also good because then at the end you can do like a before and after. Right. And you could see it yep. much cleaner. Yeah. Do you do those on Instagram? Fair, fair bit. Yeah, well. yeah, like, yeah, definitely. Hey, just to let you know, this is like straight from the camera. Yeah. And this is after the edit. I, I do that quite a bit yeah. in my stories, actually. Yeah. Um, so when you're looking at this, like, I guess if you're looking at the kid here, um, if you do content aware, if I'm just drawing a little box around him, if you do content aware, it won't work, I think. It would go a bit nuts. Yeah, it'll get a bit weird. It's grabbing like some of his pants. It's gra grabbing lots of yeah, different places. What did places. you do to that kid? Yeah. Like merged him with the <laughs> with his leg, with his bike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so I'm gonna undo that. Um, so if we just select around like these poles, what we can do um, is because like I mean it's just like understanding of patterns, right? Mm. So you know that for sure it's gonna look something like this, like this side here, right? So what you can do is you can grab the clone snap tool, grab a reference point, which is maybe this wall, which is maybe that, and then you know that it's gonna be there, which is there. Mm. So then you can just like start painting and then the kid disappears. <laughs> it's a weird thing to say, but, um, and then you can, let's say the shadow down there is a bit off. So we can just grab a part of this ground here and then paint that part. So cool. now that That's part quick. is very clean and mm. very quick. And then you can do the same thing with like all these other parts here. So again, we're going to use the clone stamp tool. We're going to grab this area now, and then it's going to start painting. Um, yeah, and then Super I guess clean. you just keep going around and like because like these are quite large parts of the photo that you want to clean up. Um, but yeah, you just keep going, doing the same thing, um, grabbing, like, let's say this part now, and you just want to paint a little bit off. But yeah, see how like I grab this line here, mm. but then you, you want to line up, line it up with this line here. So you just like make sure that it's lined up, then you start painting. This guy's gone. Yeah. So quick. It's very quick, right? Mm. And it's like, Quite easy to do, uh, a little bit satisfying. Uh, <laughs> when it works like super quick, when you get that reference point right, yeah, yeah. It's super great. Some some people are in chat are talking about that some of the shadows are a bit blue. Yeah, it's because I've um I've already color graded it in Lightroom. Like I've already done a little right. a base color grade. So I I wanted to show today more Photoshop. Mm. So I didn't really I didn't want to show that Lightroom step, but mm. it's it's already been color graded a little bit. So I've changed the colors and stuff. So if you want to if we go back. This is actually the original photo. It's like very dark, very pale, mm. very distorted, but right. I've already cleaned it up. I've already tied it up so that it's ready for mm. this live stream. Um, but again, like we could talk about how to straighten stuff and all that kind of stuff as well, mm. um, if we want to. Cool. Um, but yeah, so yes, again, we're just gonna keep going um, until like, until you get it right, until you, you clean it all up. I mean, you just have to be obviously a little bit patient with it, take your time. Um, oh, so sometimes it's grabbing other parts. Mm. So then you can just grab whatever you've already masked there. Um, for the building above, you just kind of you just need to again know what you're trying to copy. And here in this case, you can kind of just copy the part, the level above, like the next, so, like the story. next story above. <laughs> yeah. So like you know that this is gonna probably look very similar, and then again you just can just get rid of his head and copy that. Um, yeah, so we want to just I guess keep going. Mm. I guess you guys can just watch me do this. <laughs> and um, I've actually like I've got a very that's basically the same files that you guys can download. It's on my YouTube channel. Oh really? Um, and I've, I I go through this these steps as well. But I mm. guess watching this, you can sort of see how much time gets put into, mm. whereas on YouTube is very sped up and you just want to like 
do some tips and tricks. Yeah. Whereas this, you, you, you actually see, like, the amount of time that, like, exactly. that we put into photos yeah. and all that kind of stuff. What's the, what's the ideal YouTube length for a tutorial video? Uh, I like think, that. like, I don't know. Like, I, my, I usually go for, like, maybe f six minutes. Yeah. Five, six minutes. It's a lot of time for someone to watch a video, and they're yeah. probably still scrubbing along. Exactly. We like, all do that. It's very, like, if you make a 10-minute one, I feel like people might not watch it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it minutes. might be too yeah. long. Yeah. Um, yeah, and again, like, there's this part here where there's, like, this couple taking photos, and what we're going to do is try to get rid of them. And we're going to do the same technique using the clone snap tool. And that's it. Very quick. Very, very quick. Very easy. Um, then we're going to probably grab this window, or maybe even here, so we could match it up. And the reason why like, I've selected it um, is so this way is because like, I've selected this triangle, right? Mm. So that like, if I start painting outside the triangle, it's not, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. So, like, if I, nothing's going to happen right there because I've marqueed it. Mm. And that's a good way to select stuff and selectively get rid of people yep. or things. Yep. Um, if you're really like detailed about it, like you can see that like because it's like a, such a hard edge, it's very different to the rest of the photo. Mm. Um, you can patch it up by going to this blur tool and like again making maybe, maybe the size a bit smaller, just blurring it a bit. Right. So it's kind of blending it more with the background. Is that mostly just the edges that you're doing there? Yeah, because I've I've done that marquee mm. around right, which mm. is that triangle, and that's very straight, that's sharp. Very yeah. sharp. Do so you ever use a feather or anything for the marquee? Um, you you can. prefer to do it this way. I, I, I think probably easier because a bit more control, but feather is also really good because mm. it's just, it gives you like exactly what you want. But I don't know. It's just like, that's how I've kind of learned it. Yeah. This yeah. way. <laughs> just the, the classic disclaimer. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking it's about with Ben as well. He's like, I just do it this way. Yeah. It works for me. None of but us yeah. like really go through like formal Photoshop training. We just like teach ourselves yeah. a little bit here and there. Yeah. Well, you're at Adobe teaching people how to use Photoshop, so yeah. Something so to be now, said in that as well. <laughs> now with now we're teaching from teaching ourselves that we're teaching yeah. the techniques. We um, learn from each other. I think exactly is the most important thing. Exactly. Uh, let's see if we can get rid of this bag using like Content Aware. That's not bad. Um, and again, we can just use it's the close stamp tool. Yeah. <laughs> it's not bag. I'm really curious about what this lady's doing. Yeah, me too, hey. I think she's sleeping, yeah. but then there's this other woman that's taking a photo of her. It's Ben getting some street photography. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so again, like what we said before, we can tidy this up using the co uh, clone stamp tool. Mm. Um, it's just bringing back that line, like that definition between the wall and the floor. Um, yeah, and I think that's much better than before. Mm. Um, then there's like these other parts where it's definitely a lot more harder, obviously, right? Like that yeah. and that to get rid there's of the people. Going on. And this and this, it's very hard to get rid of. Mm. But um, what you can do is you can, I think Ben did this in, this in the previous episode. He grabbed a photo from somewhere else that he took, right? Mm. Yeah. And then, so here, if you look at this closely, there's an empty bench. Right. So this lady's gone up from her nap. From a nap. And she's all refreshed. <laughs> she's all refreshed. So we're going to open this up uh, in Photoshop and we're going to copy that bench in, mm. basically. So we're going to select the bench. We can just grab a big part of it. Maybe include the shadow as well, just in case. Mm. Um, yeah. And then we're going to copy it back in. And then it doesn't have to like be a perfect line. You don't have to use a tripod or anything, but you could line it up. I was going to ask you about that. Do you sh did you shoot this with a tripod? No, no. definitely not. You never do? Um, I do. I do use a tripod, but yeah. in this case, I was like in the middle of a basketball court. Yeah. And like there's people playing everywhere. So I was like, let's just take some two quick shots. Yeah. Oh, a bit more than two, but mm. two that can get me to where I want. Yeah. So I was a, you were there for a very short amount of time. Yeah. So you just had to, yeah. Just get it quickly. Yeah. Um, so then, so to line it up nicely, you can change the opacity of that layer to maybe mm. 50%. 
So now you can see like where you want to position this bench. Uh, free transform or control T. Um, then you just kind of position it into play so that it lines up. You just only need to look at the bench. You don't really need to look at anything else in the background. Um, so this bench. And if it's like a little bit out of proportion, you can use the distort, distort tool and like change, like play with the different nodes mm. um, and so on. And like you can just like line things up. And this is really good for like obviously very crowded places because um, you can just take different parts of mm. things. And if you have that part empty, then you know that you can just mask it out later. Yeah. If you have that part empty, you can just mask it out another time mm. as well. Mm. And will you always, how many shots would you normally take given you had enough time mm. in this sort of situation? Like, If I could get it empty in my first shot, then Sure, then ideal. we wouldn't be here, right? Yeah. <laughs> using a different one. I totally get that. I totally get that. But I mean, like, you knew it was busy. You knew yeah. there was lots of people yeah. around. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you know you're probably going to do something with the, the stories and, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Are you waiting for her to get off the bench? Yeah. Or like yeah. you are, yeah. you're just making sure you get all the elements yes, or exactly. trying. Yeah. Trying, so like, trying. I think I was aiming for like two benches or something to mm. be empty, but I got one in the end and I, I kind of know that I can just use that one to, yeah. to move it to the next one. Cool. Um, but yeah, so always like when I'm out shooting, I always try to like aim to get like if I want an empty shot, if I know mm. I want a, an empty shot, then I always try to get like all the different parts that I need. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so so that's, you bring the passive back full, then you can use this layer mask to start masking out like the background. So, so there's mm. a very hard edge right now. Mm. I think um, someone, Carolyn was asking, would you use a mask? And yes, I think we are about to use a mask. Yes, yep. we are using a mask. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you can change the size. If you paint black, then you erase the layer. Mm. And if you paint white, you can bring it back. Mm. So the reason you use a layer mask is so that it's non-destructive and you can always bring it back just in case you make a mistake. Mm. Uh, so then again, you're gonna just start painting the edges out. The lady's head came back, so we're gonna use white to just cover it back up. Oh, I'm toggling between background and foreground layer using the keyboard shortcut mm. X. And so if you just click X, it just goes back and forth, black and white. Nice. So it's very quick if you wanna paint black or paint white. Um, yeah, so we're just basically removing the woman sleeping on the bench by adding in a different photo. And you can see that, like, I don't know if you can see, you can kind of tell from that, from the screen, that, like, it's a little bit darker. Mm. You can see that dark patch. It's a bit, a bit weird. Yeah. Um, and what you could do now is you can use um, these, like, adjustment layers, mm -hmm. and then you can clip them down. So, what is it? Create clipping mask. So it's only affecting the layer below. So right now I'm doing brightness contrast, and here you can adjust the brightness. So I'm going to adjust the brightness brighter so that now, it's blended in it's pretty much it clean yeah um, and again the reason why you would use like an adjustment layer like this instead of going up top mm. going image adjustment bright this contrast is then you can keep adjusting this mm. like if you make a mistake if you just go like there oh it's too dark then you can just like keep adjusting it until you get it right yeah it's like non-destructive way mm. to kind of play with it a bit exactly I had a question I'm not sure we had an answer for this one but like when extending photos um, Karina is often adding sky and lawn mm. and stuff. Mm. It's like any tips behind, you know, uh, adding, you know, sky behind trees or making grass look like random or more natural? Um, so an, a way to do it, I guess, would be grabbing another sky or grabbing more pieces, more grass. Yeah. Um, and then just like blending it so that if you, like, like what we're trying to do here, right? We're just blending it um, so that the colors match. Mm. Um, if I was to extend this photo right here, right, as an example, you would, let's say I'm trying to make the building grow or whatever, right? Like mm. I want a taller building. I'm just playing around right now. Mm. So I would just grab, let's say this building here and I would copy it to a new layer. Then I would like extend it. But again, you want to look at the patterns in the building and see if what you're doing is matching up with the rest of the pattern. Right. Um, that kind of looks like quite believable already. Mm. If I just tidy up that yellow line there, I think that is believable. Yeah. 
I think you can sort of do something similar with grass. Mm. So grass, what you could do is, for example, you could, if I want to stretch this building, you can just stretch it. So like grow it like that. Mm. So with grass, you can, I think you can grow it sideways sometimes. You can mm. play with it that way. Sometimes content aware can also help right. because it fills it in for you using the information that's already there. It's already there, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how I would extend a photo. And mm. I've done it a few times as well. I've seen that, I've seen you do that effect yeah. before, yeah. Um, when you straighten a photo, for example, like like this, right? I've mm. straightened it. If I wanted the crop to be something, if I wanted the crop like this, for example, mm. there's gonna be gaps on the right. sides. Right, there's gonna because when you're shooting upwards, you want to straighten it, mm. and then there's always going to be like these gaps. Yeah. But if you use content aware, for example, like just grab a triangle on the corner, and you go fill content aware, it should fill it in for you pretty nicely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so that stuff helps a lot. Mm. And so yeah, that's sort of what I do. And if it mm. doesn't, then I use like the client stamp tool. It's basically the same tools that I'm using yeah. now to get rid of people. Yeah. Um. To, to do this, right? It's like the easiest, fastest way, and then it's the next more yeah. complicated way, and then it's the next one. Yeah, it could yeah. be really easy. Like, mm. if I want to extend the basketball court sideways, I could just literally stretch a little bit, because not many people will notice. Yeah. If I, yeah, if I, for example. And I guess that comes back to, like, I know at design school, they're like, never stretch pixels mm. and stuff, but but actually, like, like thinking about the output of the image mm. and what you can actually get away with exactly. is really important. I guess also, like, I use a camera with very high megapixels so that like mm. you can stretch it a little bit right like so it's maybe dependent on the camera if, mm. if your camera doesn't have as high as a megapixel or resolution then you have to find other ways yeah like maybe grab a stock photo yeah or you know take another photo of the grass next to it or something yeah you know? yeah. Um, yeah cool I'm hoping there was a magic grass tool you don't know about <laughs> no there is no magic I mean the closest magic tool there is is probably content aware fill but, uh, yeah, so you there's no I mean, grass specific version yet. There are like grass brushes that I've heard, yeah, like, and tree brushes that people have made. We've, we we have one on with um, Carrie McElroy came through and she does a lot of um, uh, like photo compositing mm. and does a lot of like um, I know airbrushing is a wrong term, but like fixing up things, content for magazines yeah. and beauty yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, um, and she did something similar, it's like kind of to what you're doing, but she she made brushes what you're talking about, she made brushes from. Um, the texture in the image, uh, and then used yeah. it to paint like yeah. the background and foreground. It's essentially it's kind of magic, kind of like the clone stamp, but it's like yes. a physical actual brush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I and think then that, you do the lighting really cool. over the top and all that sort of stuff. So much more cumbersome than right clicking and content aware field tool, but it is possible. I guess it's about how much time do you have? Exactly. You know, you know, is it a client job? You know, are you doing 20 of them? Yeah. You know? Exactly, because like, then it takes ages. It could take a really, really long time. Sometimes it, you might be better off shooting a new photo. I uh, know that like... Getting stock photography. Do you know Aaron Nace from Flern on YouTube? No, I don't. There's this guy, I think he's also, he does a lot of Photoshop. He, he talked at Adobe Max last year or two years ago. Okay. And I went to his talk. I've been mm. following him on YouTube for a long time. Mm. Um, he has a video on how to create brushes. Oh, right. So that like, it's like a, whatever, like I guess it's very similar to what right. the girl was doing. Carrie, yeah. Yeah, Carrie was doing. Yeah. Yeah, so there's like a tutorial, you can make your own brushes, for yeah. example. Yeah, so if we'll you select, that out. If, you, if you make a little marquee and selection, you can turn them into brushes. Mm. Yeah, it sounds similar, yeah. Um, okay, so now we've got this. What I want to do is, because like if I start moving this, like the, the clipping mask might not come through, so I might just like, because I've got one bench correct, I might just flatten like that image that I have and make mm. it its own layer. So then again, if I make a mistake, it can always go back. Mm. Um, so now what we want to do is grab this bench that we've got and copy it to the other side because we the aim is to try to get rid of the people on the other side. Um, the shadow we could sort of grab later because we're going to be flipping this. Um, so layer via copy. And then want to bring the bench and drag it to the other side. So now we start to get rid of the people. Um, and so because obviously the bench is the wrong perspective, you go free transform and then you flip horizontal. So now it's flipping the other way. Mm -hmm. I mean the, the the lighting on the bench is not 100% because obviously this flip the yeah you yeah. flip the shadows but. 
you can also play with the ground and push the shadow of the ground that way. Right. But we'll, we'll show you, I'll show you guys how to do it after mm. this. And again, we want to uh, make it 50% and adjust it. Uh, so it is in the right place. Stop. I think that's looking not bad. Get full again. Um, and yeah, again, we're going to do another layer mask. It's okay if you start showing back the people behind, because then you can you can also still just get rid of them. So this, like his upper body, is easier to get rid of than his full body, as long as you have the bench details. Right. Um, so you're trying to kind of chip away at it. Yeah, the bit by bit. Part, the hardest part first. Yeah. So you want to get that bench in the photo. And again, like the scooter's okay. Um, you might want to just make your brush really small so that like you get rid of this shadow here so that because you want to push the shadow that way right mm -hmm. afterwards. Um, actually, there is a trick to getting the bottom of the thing, the bottom of the bench lighting correct. Because you just like, all you got to do is just grab this part. Say if I copy that, push it to the other side. And because it's like, bring it to the top, because it's like sort of a cube, you know how like mm. sometimes a, you see a cube and it's like the... Yeah, it's like, I mean? is it, yes, I do. Is it like inverted cube <laughs> yeah, yeah. or is it yeah. outside? Yeah. Something like that. I know exactly what you're talking about, but I don't think I'm doing a better job at explaining it. So then... But I do know what you mean. You're grabbing that and you're essentially pushing the, the light, making the lighting the same as the other bench. Mm. And then you get the shadow as well. Yeah. Um, cool. So right. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's yeah. Pretty cool. So then you I get that. Of that. Right. So you get one bench right. It's probably better if I started with the other, this other bench because then. Because then you can put on top. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how do I copy both? I want to move both. There we go. Yeah. So if I can do that. Then again, we can just start like using the layer mask and start painting. Uh, do something smaller so that the edges are not very not as sharp. Oh. Yeah, so that bench is getting there. Carolyn um, was asking, how much time do you put in a photo, like on average? I mean, this one obviously is a bit longer because we're trying to get rid of a lot of yep. stuff. But yep. usually, if I like if it's minor Photoshop editing and like Lightroom, I reckon average 20 minutes, 20 to half an hour. Wow. So it's not too bad. Mm. Um, Quick. Should and like if you, if you, cause I do, I'm starting to do a lot more carousels now. Mm. And I guess the second, third, fourth photo doesn't have to be like the best one. Cause you want the first one to be the best one. Yeah. Then you can kind of put a bit less time on the second, third, fourth, fifth mm. photo. But mm. like, obviously I want it to a standard that I always Try to get to, yeah, and and yeah. So like, I guess for a full set of maybe five photos, maybe like forty-five minutes to an hour. Wow, it's pretty quick, and that's like one post. It's pretty quick. Um, but in the past, like before I was doing these carousels, mm. um, it would be much quicker, right? Because yeah. just one photo, yeah. and maybe I would have spent more time on it. Mm. Um, but um, so again, we're gonna. Oh, how come it's so hard to copy both? So now those two benches are getting there. We got our shadow, got our bench. Yep, now we just gotta get rid of that shadow. Yeah. Oh, we just maybe bring it down. Yeah, there we go. Behind. Um, but yeah, again, then maybe we can even start flattening it again. And then again, clean it up with the clone snap tool. We often flatten as you go, like once you're kind of pretty happy yeah, with it, you're but like, I mean, cool. I'm not flattening, I, I'm not flattening the whole thing. Cause yeah. you can see here, there's, you can see all the layers still there. And just in case I make a mistake, I can just go back yep. and just fix something up and then flatten again. Okay, cool. Um, this tree, for example, let me just tidy that up. And again, we might just grab a marquee there so that we're not affecting the bottom of it. And then paint in this window. And the tree should come too. Of this tree, something like that, and again, there's a bit of a glow behind 
tree, but you can just like keep going and keep masking. <laughs> um, and then again, we want to get rid of these guys here. Um, they might be, I mean, like content aware might be able to register that quickly now because it's just so we can try it. So if you just figuring out from the pixels around it, so yeah, so that's already much better. Yeah, then you can just like again clone stamp that and keep going. Oops, too big, too big of a brush. And then again, down here, we want to start getting rid of the feet. Yeah, just a little bit of brushing, I mm. guess. Um, and I guess here as well, we can get rid of the scooter's handlebars. So yeah, that's mm. very close to getting there. Do you have a group your layers? Karina uh, was, do. was saying she groups I a bit. I do. Yeah. So like if, for example, if these four layers I, I can just group them here and just like turn them into like bench. Yeah, probably depends on how, how big the file is. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I do group them, and it's very useful if you if mm. your layers start to you start too many layers and you yeah. get really really like um, confused. Mm. Then uh, grouping them is very very important, and naming your layers is also very important if you want to keep a very organized file. Um, which I haven't done today, but I usually do. Mm -hmm. um, sure, sure. <laughs> sure you do. Ooh, That's what everybody weird. says. So yeah, again, mm -hmm. we can just keep painting to get rid of those shadows and fixing things up. Someone was asking in the chat before as you were going, but I didn't want to mm -hmm. you know, mess with your flow, but how do you, um, when you're taking multiple photos without a tripod, how do you get like the same angle? You don't have to. That's right. why, um, like, obviously you want to try to get it as close as possible. Yeah. But um, because there's the, there's the free transform and then distort tool mm. in Photoshop, you can actually get it pretty close when you're, like, distorting things. Yeah. Um, you can also, for, uh, I'll, I want to also maybe grab this bench too and copy it across. For example, right? So if I'm copying this bench, lay my copy, moving it across, and it's not lining up, I can go distort and like play with it, mm. like go crazy with it. Or you can do warp and you can like warp it. So there's all these different tools mm. in Photoshop that can actually line things up. Mm. And once you line one up, even though other things, because of perspective might not line up, mm. but that's the only part you were trying to get rid of anyways. Right. Um, so it's okay. Mm. And you can kind of trick the perspective sometimes because it's only a small part of a photo. Yeah, yeah, in the grand scheme mm. of things, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so now we're trying to get rid of this lady who's taking a photo of the... Of no one now. Of no one now. <laughs> That's even weirder. <laughs> Stay in photo of the bench. Stay in photo of the bench. Because the bench She's is... like, wow, that was a great crop. Well done, Demis. <laughs> that was... The bench is... <laughs> it's clean now. So now we, we're trying to get rid of this lady. Um, again, same sort of thing. We, there's clothes behind now, so it's kind of a little bit trickier. Mm. Um, we're going to go lay of mask. And it's okay if we get her head back in, but the aim of it is to just maybe get the clothes back in as well. So there's the clothes. Are they selling clothes or are they hanging them out to dry? I think they're hanging out to dry. Mm. Um, I think that's, I think all over Asia, they just hang clothes everywhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there's just these resi residents that live there mm. and they're just, they're hanging just hanging out there. Yeah. Um, what I might do um, to replace to replace this lady's head is actually maybe copy one of the pants over. Mm. Um, and so like if I just grab these pants and then go back to the layer layer of my copy, you can bring it over. And because there's a bench already on top, mm. um, again, the pants cover it up. Cool. It's very it's very hard, I guess, to notice that this pants is the same as that pants. Because, I don't know, it's just a blob. 
You know what I mean? Mm. And then also we can also yeah. grab maybe these pants. They could be shorts because they're <laughs> behind the bench. <laughs> exactly. Right. You can also grab these pants and get rid of this girl as well, right? And then you can just copy that across. And maybe they have two identical pants. You yep. never know, right? They're matching. People they buy match. same clothes. It's true. Um, and then again, I want to get rid of that. Just make sure that the clothes are good. But then, ooh. then afterwards, like her feet and stuff, you can just get rid of quite quickly using content aware. Right. And maybe I'll flatten one more time and then that's it. That's pretty much how I would get rid, maybe that's a bit weird. Yeah, that's okay. Like a half folded leg pants. But yeah, that's pretty clean. Mm. So if I'm gonna, if I group everything together, you can see like the before and after. It's quite drastic. Mm. And I mean, like I've spent, I don't know how long, has it, how long has it been? 30 minutes, 40 minutes? Not including my questions over the top? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and minutes. so like you could spend another 30 minutes and like mm. you get it very, very, very clean mm. if you really want to. You can even go to the point where like, um, I don't know, you start cleaning up these marks on the wall or whatever, right? right. Um, this comes down to that time, how much time do you want to spend on your image? Exactly, so mm -hmm. I would maybe just copy this green one, which is clean, say if I copy that, and then bring it down here. And then again, use the layer mask and then paint around. So then like, mm. if you really, really want to clean that up, right? Which I do because like Ben said, <laughs> I like to do it. But yeah, that kind of stuff, like it's, it's very quick to do and you can mm. just duplicate that again to the one above mm. and both, both are gone now. Yeah, So like super so, quick, 10 seconds Yeah, and you something. Can, you can mm. obviously like, I didn't do it properly, but there's mm. always like, you can clean that. You can clean the layer mask up very, very quickly, mm. like right there and right there. Yeah, so mm. it's very quick and very easy to do. Yeah. Um, there's another photo, which I guess maybe has more of a wow factor. Like I just opened this. This is a. This is the original file, and this is the cleaned up file, I guess. Um, so if you look at this file, which I prepared earlier, I've used the same techniques mm. to get rid of a bunch of people. Um, it's really funny actually, um, this photo that's loading. Um, it's in Pamukkale in Turkey. Right. Um, which is a salt, salt farm, salt sort of. Oh, I thought it was snow. Yeah, no, it's like a, it's very hot. Oh wow, I've been looking at that image like all week. Because <laughs> that's what yeah, we used that's to. The, that's the, that's the picture for yeah, the... And I was thinking, man, she must be really cold. Yeah. <laughs> so, so and yeah. then I thought, oh, maybe you photoshopped someone else in. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta remember to ask Demis, <laughs> why did you photoshop someone into snow that's dressed for summer? <laughs> she must be so cold. How confusing. Yeah, nah, but it's very hot. It was summer. Right. And it's salt baths. And so it, it used that to look like so this much before. Sense. Oh, cool. So I was taking a, this photo and I was mm. telling my wife to stand here and pose. Right. And then this couple down here, they were just like laughing at us. They're like, what's wrong with these guys? They just want oh, really? photos. <laughs> like, and then I'm like, in my head, I'm like, uh, it's okay. They can laugh. Yeah. But like looking at the final product, like it's, it's so much Super cleaner, cool. right? Yeah. Like it's, it's so much better. Mm. Um, th even this top part, I even got rid of this sky. Yeah. Like I think it's it's the same sort of technique as what we were talking about before. You mm. could either grab another photo here, right, mm. or like a, a very quick way to do it is just select select this, lay by copy, and then you can just like make it big. Right. Right. And <laughs> seems very simple. And then like just lay a mask lay a mask it out so that like there's no hard edge, mm. like that's already clean enough right. to make it a full frame. Yeah. Right? That was very quick. Yeah, super quick. And then, like I said, like you can just get, using the techniques that I taught before, yeah. you can, I could, I could show you guys as well, I guess, if, you, mm -hmm. if, we, if we have time. I guess we, we do have a bit, bit of time now, right? Yeah, we've got about 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, 
again. Now's a good time actually to shout out for any more questions. Yeah. Because I know there might have been a couple of questions there maybe we missed. So uh, we've got about 10 minutes. So ask your questions now. Mm. And we'll see if we can get to them. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of content aware these people out as we go. Did you find it? We were chatting to Ben. Ben was um, showing a photo in snow in Japan. Mm. Um, and it was the first time, he was saying, I was very surprised to hear him say it, especially how much he loves Japan, that it was one of the first times he was shooting in snow. Oh. We were chatting about like white, white balance and everything like that, because that's something I always struggle with. Right. Like trying to cancel it out in camera. Do you do that? Did you need to do that here in the salt flats in Turkey mm. or? Not really. So uh, I, I always just adjust my white balance and stuff mm. in, in post. So like if it's a raw file, mm. You can do it very easily just here in like the in Lightroom in the temperature yeah. slider. So you fix it in post pretty much. Yeah, I mean, if you're not happy, as in like when you're out there shooting and you mm. look at the camera and you're and you know you think to yourself, I can't fix this in Lightroom. Right. Then you start playing with the white balance and right. like what Kelvin you want or you want cool, you want mm. fluorescent or whatever, right? Mm. But if auto is fine, and you think, oh, that's easily fixable in Lightroom, mm. then I just stick to auto. Yeah, yeah. why not? Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Um, I guess, like, I mean, look at this white balance here. It's, like, very weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, like, True. once I, like, brighten it up and, like, you know, add a bit of, you know, just a bit of Lightroom already fixes the problem. So if you just mm. push the shadows up full, it's much better. Mm. That's already much better. And then you can increase the vibrance to get the colors up and vibrant uh, saturation and like that kind of stuff already in Lightroom pushes your photo, makes it so different already. Like that was just like a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Just from like the first six sliders of Lightroom. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so for me, like maybe like if I'm already out there and I just need to get photos and it's like a street, let's say it's street or it's snowing, we don't have much time. I just mm. shoot, shoot, shoot. Mm. I know in, in the edit at home when I have more time, mm. I can edit it. How soon from when you do a shoot are you normally editing? Um, you ever, take a, ever, ever see a bunch of photos and you're like, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the past, like when I first started photography, I was like always like right now, I'm going to edit it right now because right. I'm always in it. Mm. Like I'm always in it. I'm always excited. I'm still excited over it. Mm. But I think lately I've been more like thinking about if this photo is the same as when I took it back then. Like, mm. is it still a banger? Right. Is it still like the shot that I think would be would make myself proud or like yeah. up to the standard that I wanted to? Mm. Um, so yeah, in the past I was like, shoot, let's edit now because I'm so excited. But now I kind of let it rest a little bit. Maybe give it like a week. Cooling off two. period. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, it depends, right? If it's like if you want something relevant and if you, let's say you're shooting. You know, an event like Vivid, right, or something, right? Yeah, which is a light show, a light event in Sydney. Mm. You want to post it during the time so that like people get excited and people go out and shoot Vivid too, right? You right. don't want to post like one week after Vivid when it's all gone, right? So then like, there's there's a time and place, I guess, for different scenarios. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. but if it's just like a holiday photo or like something that's not time pressured to a client. Mm. Um, then I would usually leave it like one or two weeks and like try to get the edit or like think about how I can make the best edit from the photos I took. Right. Um, do, yeah. you ever, do you ever find a photo from the archives and oh, you're like, all the time. oh, actually, all actually the time. yeah. <laughs> yeah, because like what, what you like now might not be what you like later. Yeah. Because your taste can change yep. and all of a sudden it's like, oh, that photo is actually really cool. Yeah. Like, and back then I was like, oh, why did I like it? But mm. it's like, your taste changes and the way you edit changes. Yeah. Like I think and what you can do and yeah. what you think looks good and yeah. In the past I was editing more like desaturated stuff and like mm. very like I would always push the colours down. But like right. all of a sudden now, like in the last year or something, I love my saturation. I love right. my colours popping. Mm. And I don't know, like it changes. Yeah. Uh, super cool. Yeah. Yeah, Rosie was asking the same sort of question I think as me, do you ever go back and re edit? So I guess that's about like having like taking so many shots mm. and, and keeping those shots. We were, ch we were chatting to Ben previously about how many shots you know he he took, and he, he just said he keeps everything. Do you yeah, do you I keep, keep everything? everything I well? never delete. Like it's a rule that I always say: never delete. Because 
Mm. Even if it's like a weird shot of a wall or whatever, you can use the texture of that wall for somewhere else. Right. Like if any little thing, you can use it. You guys are like preppers, like yeah. preparing for like a storm where you can't take a photo, <laughs> no, you can never take yeah. another photo, and you're like, I'm just going to have to piece together exactly. everything I do from now, from all the photos. Exactly, but like, yeah. even even like same photos, like mm. two years apart, you can edit them differently. Right, yeah. And show your improvement. You can tell, you can show people, this is what my edit was back then, and this is what I would do now. Mm. Yeah. And show that like contrast between back then and now and like I guess you could generate and get generate a conversation with your audience which one's better right they might say the old one's better yeah then you're like oh no but it's okay but it's 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 always like photography is always up to you and like Mm. what you feel what you like and there's never any right or wrong right like if you if you think it's great then it's great yeah it's a a very subjective thing subjective totally yeah um but yeah cool um Jamie says does it still spark joy (laughs) It does. Of course it does. Sparks joy. That's why I'm still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the importance of burst mode. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, burst mode is good, but oh man, I, I recently got um, the Sony A7R4. Right. Which is like the latest uh, like high resolution full frame mirrorless camera from Sony. Right. And it's like the burst is like, I think it's like 10 or 20 shots a second. Wow. I think it's 10. But I kind of, when I first got it, I just like went crazy i was like i'm just gonna shoot everything yeah. and then like my memory space is like gone yeah like my hard drive when i on a trip like because you're shooting in raw shooting in raw it's like 60 megapixel files yeah so it's massive and yeah. it's like oh, even man. on the highest fastest speed yeah. sd yeah you're filling it up pretty quick so so there's a there's two functions there's like yeah. high plus which is like mm. super fast and yeah. there's like high so i just put on high or medium now right. so i don't go crazy and yeah. like lose every single bit of storage i have wow um, All right. Yeah. Well, um, at the risk of being cut off again, um, we might we might say our goodbyes now. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone in the chat. Um, we are back tomorrow um, with um, Ben Ichiban at 1 p.m. Australian mm-hmm. Eastern Standard Time. And then Demis is also going to be back with some more editing tips. Um, and then we're back on Friday as well. And we're going to chill out. We're going to um, we're going to be talking about some social media stuff, tips and tricks. Demis gets asked all the time. Yeah, it should be a fun uh, one. I made a little like presentation. Oh, we've done a presentation? So we'll see how we go. We're no, getting, it should be a fun one. We're getting fancy, um, <laughs> which is going to be great because it'll be Friday and we're going we're gonna to have a good chat about, about all that sort of stuff. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody in chat. Um, and thank you to Demis. Thank you. Thank you, Flynn. And thank you, everyone, for watching. <laughs> and, and we'll yeah. see you later. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.